Hi, I'm Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at the University of Utah. Today I wanted to talk about the Bode plots and what happens when you have multiple poles or zeros um, at one location. So in this example, we're going to look at two, pole, two zeros at the same location. So here's our equation. We want to first get this into standard form. So in order to do that, I notice that there is a squared here. So that means that there's going to be two of these quantities. So I could rewrite that, and it, this would be the same equation because those are just, that square means that those are just multiplied out. So in order to get this into the standard form, I need to get a 1 in each of these locations, which means I need to pull out the tens, and here I need to pull out that 100. So in order to do that and to get the same equation, I'm going to take a 10 from the first one and a 10 from the second one. And then I have to multiply that 10 on the bottom of each of these so that each of those is also the same quantity. So I can write those out as separate quantities or I can square them, which means the same thing mathematically. Here I'm going to divide by 100. So here I have a 100 is a pole, and I also have this 100 times 10, which will give me 1,000 for the zeros. And because of that, I also have two of those. So I have two at 1K, I have two zeros, and then 100 is my pole. So I have, I'm going to mark these. I have at 100, I have a pull, and at 1K, I have two. So I'm going to do a two times at that 1,000. So I also need to find out the starting value. I notice that I do not have any poles or zeros at the origin. So I'm going to just take the number that's out in front, 20 log of that number. So 10 times 10 times 10 over 100. And that ends up giving me a value of 20 dB. Note here that this negative does not change the magnitude at all. All it's going to change is on the axis, it's going to be instead of going a positive real, it's going to be a negative real. And so all it changes is the phase itself. So the negative does not change the magnitude, only the phase. So here we're going to graph this. We, we have a flat line, as you can see here, until we reach 100. At 100, we have the effect of a pole, which is minus 20 dB per decade. So starting already at 0, we're going to add on a minus 20 dB per decade change and the slope now becomes minus 20 dB per decade. So if we go down, that's going to go down to zero within one decade. And then we also have a change at 1,000. So at 1,000, we have a change of two of the effects of a zero, which is plus 20 dB per each one. So from minus 20, we have a change of plus 40 dB per decade, that gives us an effective plus 20 dB per decade change. So from 1,000 to 10K, it's going to change by 20. So that will go up from 0 to 20. And then one more decade gives us to 40. And then it will keep going at that plus 20 dB slope forever. So it just keeps growing at that slope. So at any point after this graph, we can still figure out what the value is at specific locations. So for the phase, we need to know the starting value for the phase. And we have an effect of minus, so we have a, a change of minus or plus 180. I usually do a minus 180, so I'm going to start off my graph at minus 180 degrees. So 
the effects from each of the poles and zeros. I'm going to circle these again. And remember, you cannot add the effects like you do for the magnitude. What you're going to do instead is look at the range that they have an effect in there. So the ranges are what we need to determine first. So from 1,000, we're going to have a one decade before divide, meaning 1,000 divided by 10 gives me 100. 1,000 multiplied by 10 gives me a 10K. And that change is 20 dB per decade, um, 20 d 40, sorry, 45 degrees per decade, 45 degree slope per decade for each zero. And we have two of them, so we multiply that by two to give us an effective 90 degree slope per decade change during that region. So for 10, or for 100, 100 divided by 10 is 10. 100 times 10 is 1,000. And so this is going to be my region, is 10 to 1,000. The slope is going to be a minus 45 degree per decade slope during that region because it is a pole. There is an overlap here. And so I have plus minus. Plus 90 degrees minus 45 gives me a plus 45 degree slope per decade. So I have the graph of this is a minus 180, again from that negative number, until I reach this region where I start to have changes within a region. So from 10 to 100, I have minus 45. So from 180, minus 45 gives me 225. So this gives me a minus 45 degree change within there. And then I have a, an effective plus 45. So I go back up to up to minus 180. And then I have a plus 90 for one more decade, so I go from minus 180 to plus 90 would be minus 90. So I'm gonna go all the way up here. And then it becomes flat after that. And it will be at that minus 90 degrees for the rest of the time. It doesn't have any more regions of, of where the polar zero is affecting it. All right, this concludes this example. Thanks for watching.